Hi, I'm Randy. Welcome to my studio. Welcome to my art channel. So today I'm going to be working on some flower paintings and I'm going to talk through my techniques, how I approach this, why I'm painting these in the first place. And I'm going to tell you guys a little story about why I've avoided painting flowers for a long, long time. So this technique primarily involves making a crazy abstract background and then using some negative space painting to make the flowers. Started out wanting to experiment a little bit with an acrylic pour. Yeah, I'm sure some of you know a lot about acrylic pour painting. I've only done it a few times and it this didn't work out exactly the way I'd hoped. I think I used too much of certain colors. It, it kind of turned into mud. Uh, I also didn't use an additive like um, alcohol or silicone or dish soap or anything else to create uh, cells and divisions between the paint colors. So I, I've obviously got some practice, you know, that I need to do on this to, to get better at it. But I also wasn't too stressed out or worried about it. I knew that I could always change it and fix it in the end. I, I just wanted something a little bit random as a background to start with. I do love the marbling effect that you can get with this kind of technique. And at any rate, I did a few of these and picked, picked one that I wanted to try and, and take further. So I got inspired to do this by watching painting videos by Bob Burridge. I'll put the link in the description. It got me thinking, you know, why haven't I painted flowers before? And that would be interesting to paint. It actually goes back to, and I've talked about this before, but my professor, one of my professors in college, Professor Sella, I remember him always saying, we're not here to paint pretty pictures, or we're not here to paint pictures of flowers, or pretty flowers for our mom. By the way, if you're watching mom, I love you. But it made me think. I always laughed when he would say that, but I understood what he meant. You know, at the time, a lot of people didn't understand. A lot of people would come into his class and they just were focused on the end goal. Like, what am I going to make? Am I going to make a picture of this or a picture of that? And, and they were so focused on the results. And I think what Professor Sella was trying to say and what it meant to me was he was trying to get people to focus on the process and the materials and what it's like to move paint around on the canvas and what are the results you can get by trying different things and not be focused on uh, you know what what is this going to look like in the end so i think that I, I i took that comment to heart and actually probably kept it a little too long you know i let it influence me a lot longer than it should have meaning it was useful at the time and it's still useful today in a certain sense but kind of put me in this mind frame that, you know, I shouldn't be painting flowers, which makes no sense at all. I think that all types of painting, all types of art, all types of creation, you know, it, you should paint whatever you want. And flowers are amazing and everyone should paint them and they should paint them realistic and they should paint them, you know, abstract, whatever. It doesn't matter. And that wasn't his point anyway, but it, it took me a while to, to get there. And so I think I just subconsciously sort of avoided painting flowers for a long, long time because of that. Even so, when I'm painting flowers now, like here, I'm not really painting them realistically, obviously. And, and Bob Burge doesn't paint them that way either. Uh, it's more of an abstract expression, an impression. And I'm attracted to that sort of thing. I'm attracted to that sort of thing because it's a balance of, yeah, we're painting flowers, but we're also not really painting flowers, if that makes any sense. We're painting shapes and we're painting color and we're just moving paint around, and we're creating an effect and a feeling, but not necessarily a realistic subject. And, you know, again, realistic subjects are great, and I'm, I'm starting to dabble more into that, and I'm enjoying it. I like this blend of painting something without painting it, if that makes any sense. And so here, you know, you can see I just have a large round brush, and I'm just picking up different colors off the palette and just pretty randomly smudging them around. Now I am putting, you know, certain colors in certain places. I'm kind of thinking ahead, probably a little bit too much, honestly. I, I probably should be may, taking a much more random approach to this. But again, this is just practice. Uh, this is just me trying some of these techniques for the first time. Uh, and you'll see where this is going to go. But essentially, we're going to start to paint in the background around the flowers and I'll talk about in the end, like what I thought was successful and what I thought could be improved. But at any rate, you're just trying to remove the things that aren't flowers, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Yeah. And once again, the, the great thing about acrylic is it's similar to gouache and casein. You can layer it. You can continue to cover the paint. It dries really fast. So I could essentially paint this thing over and over and over again as many times as I want. And that's sort of a double-edged sword, you know, because 
you don't know necessarily when to stop. You know, here I'm trying to build up, I'm trying to make a vase essentially. And once I get the shape of the flowers in a, in a decent place, I start to just work on the background and the surrounding areas, uh, bringing in some different colors, trying to create some contrast. I do, you know, do as I say, not as I do. I cannot help myself. I paint with my fingers all the time. You've seen it, I'm sure, if you've watched these videos before. You know, Bob does that too. But I'm going to start trying some techniques here in a few minutes that are my own, you know, things that I've, I've learned over the years that I think are successful and, and work well. And I'm not sure if Bob does this or not, but I, you know, I like to bring in some thin and thick lines. You know, here I'm just using what I call a liner brush. Some people call it a rigger, uh, script liner, um, whatever. It's a very skinny a skinny brush <laughs> that you can make thin lines with. I'm using a very, very light touch here uh, and almost pure, I think this is pure white. You know, you could probably play around with different different colors and obviously get different effects, but I think this is a fairly intuitive process for me. I'm not sure if as you're watching this, you feel like I'm putting these lines in the wrong places, but I'm basically going around trying to find what I think are flower shapes and just adding in these somewhat abstract, loose lines. This, this line work to really help define the shapes a little bit better and uh, give them some, you know, just points of interest that your eye can move around and, and uh, make it feel more like a bouquet. Once I lay down some, you know, a lighter color, uh, I like to come back with a little bit of a, a darker color as well. And I really feel like it adds to the vibrancy of the painting. It, it really does feel like it captures a certain sort of dynamic feel. And I'd like to hear, you know, let me know what you guys think too. Uh, whatever, if you see something I'm doing that you think is working or not working, you know, please feel free. Constructive criticism is always welcome. You know, just to frame this up again, like this is practice for me. This is me exploring new subject matter, trying new things, taking what I've learned and trying to apply it uh, to something maybe I've seen somewhere else and, but make it more my own in some ways. I think that this was a very successful experiment, if you will. Um, there, but there's also things that I could, you know, certainly I see that I know I could do better. The flowers felt like they're a bit of a, like a cloud or a rectangle or, you know, they're not as pleasing in my mind as far as an overall silhouette as they could be. I kind of filled up the paper and made this sort of T-shape. Um, I almost hate even drawing attention to that because it, it, it's like once you see it, you can't unsee it. Uh, that wasn't the point. The point of the exercise was for me to practice this technique and see what I could do and learn, right? So next time, I'll maybe be a little more thoughtful in my composition. Maybe I'll work a little bit larger. Maybe I'll create two or three vases uh, together, you know, so it's all a learning process. Cool. So if you've stuck with me this long, uh, thank you for sure. I really appreciate it. I wanted to talk a little bit about some upcoming projects because I really do like to hear all your feedback, what you think works, what you'd like to see. I have a lot going on these days. I have a lot of commissions in the works. I have a lot of personal painting projects in the works. I'm going to be painting uh, some more airplanes, uh, lots of animals, some fish, some pets. I have some landscapes. I have some, you know, taking older paintings and reimagining them through my own perspective. I'm going to be doing some cityscapes. So one thing that's interesting to me is I, I really love Basquiat's style. I just have this image in my mind of him on the floor painting these big paintings, uh, just dumping anything and everything out of his mind, things that were significant to him uh, onto the canvas. I love his style. I love just the expressiveness of his marks. Something about his work speaks to me. I think the, the idea of him just painting all the time, working on these large canvases and just, you know, thinking through all this imagery and the things that had a lot of meaning for him. Like, you know, it's, it is a sort of a childlike primitive style, but it's really expressive. And I, and I've, I've always been attracted to that. So I'm going to be playing around with doing my own paintings, referencing Basquiat's work. I'm also thinking about doing some ASMR videos. So just maybe half an hour of painting real time, with nothing but natural sound. So the mixing of the paint, the brush on the canvas, palette knife, etc. I'm sure you've seen it. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out things that I'm interested in doing, but at the same time would be helpful and useful and interesting to others. So let me know. Yeah, I'd love to hear, you know, if anybody says, you know, yeah, you should do that. I'd really like to see that. If there's a, if there's a consensus in the comments around what people want to see next, 
uh, then yeah, I'll, I'll definitely try and move that up in the, in the queue. So yeah, if any of that stuff sounds interesting to you, uh, if anything in particular sounds interesting to you, uh, yeah, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Some of the clients that I have, they have deadlines and I have, you know, I have to prioritize what I'm going to be working on, but let me know what things you think are interesting and I'll try to get those lined up and, uh, and make some, some videos of that stuff soon. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Have a good one.